Ashley Bar here and in today's video I want to talk about a very momentous occasion that happened in my house a couple of weeks ago when a video on my channel finally hit 1 million views. And the video itself was quite simple. It was just about how I got my first tech job at Amazon the summer before my senior year of college. Now, this was quite a big deal to me and of course I had to celebrate with a lot of dessert. But the reason why it was such a big deal is because it took more than a year to get there and was another milestone in my channel's growth that kind of proved to me that this career of YouTube is something worth pursuing. So yeah, in today's video, I'll talk a bit more about myself and why I think this topic matters. And then I'll dive into the video itself and how it kind of blew up on YouTube before going into some of the numbers of how much I made and some factors that led to that. And shout out to Storyblocks, which is a lovely sponsor of today's video. We'll get back to them in a little bit, but yeah, let's get to it. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, I never really dreamed of becoming a YouTuber. I'm pretty awkward and introverted and I don't really like talking about myself, but one thing led to another and by the end of 2019, I ended up quitting my software engineering job to pursue YouTube full time with only eight subscribers. <sighs> Probably not the wisest of decisions, but two years later, here I am, uh, and my channel has grown enough such that I can sustain myself off of my YouTube income. And to be honest, I think the only reason I could actually continue this channel in the first place was because of this video about how I got my software engineering internship at Amazon. This video itself, I think, contributed to about 25% of my channel's growth. Now, when I started this channel, I really had no idea about YouTube or the creator economy or how to make a sustainable income off of this platform. And I don't think I was alone because when I asked you guys on Instagram how much you think I made from a video that hit 1 million views, the answers were really all over the place from $200 to $10,000 to a million dollars. And for me, I only really realized the potential of making money on YouTube after watching some of Shelby Church's videos on how much she makes as a YouTuber and specifically how much she made from her video that hit 1 million views. But unlike Shelby Church, I don't have millions of subscribers. And so I thought this video would be helpful to either small creators out there or just people who are nosy who want to learn a bit more about how much money you really can make from YouTube. In my Amazon video, this video, and pretty much every other video on my channel, you probably noticed that I use a lot of stock footage. And Storyblocks, which happens to be today's lovely sponsor, makes it so much easier for me to tell my story without having to scour the internet for hours to find the perfect clip. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life with stock video, music, sound effects, even an easy to use online video editor. I also love how Storyblocks is investing in diverse creators to curate stock media that reflects the world today through their Restock initiative. They're developing so much new content to authentically represent the lives of everyone, including the LGBTQI plus and BIPOC communities. So yeah, there's just so much to love. So pick a subscription that works for you and you can get access to unlimited royalty-free video or audio content to spice up your YouTube videos. So use my link in the description down below to try out Storyblocks for yourself. And thank you again Storyblocks for supporting my channel. Now back to the video. So you're probably curious about what this video that hit 1 million views is all about. And in this video, I basically talk about how I had switched to CS in the second half of my college career and had one final summer to kind of prove myself and prove that this was a good idea to transition from pre-med to tech. So yeah, I think the story is just quite relatable to anyone who is on the job search, uh, like me right now. And because of that, I actually expected for the video to get picked up right off the bat after uploading the video. But I was quite surprised to see that for actually, I think almost three to six months, the views on my channel were pretty much stagnant at like 500 to 1000 views. And at that point, I kind of just told myself that the video was yet another flop and that no one really cared about my random tech internship story. But then, one day in September, I was just scrolling through my YouTube analytics, as I do in my free time, and I noticed that I was getting more views on my channel than usual. And I dug into it a little bit more and realized that the Amazon video was slightly getting picked up by the YouTube algorithm. On one hand, I was relieved that it was finally getting noticed, 
but I was also kind of nervous about whether it would be enough to actually get picked up by the holy algorithm. So I kind of switched up a few things in the title and the tags and thumbnail to optimize a video to be picked up in search and by the algorithm. And I don't know if it was changing the title or other factors completely out of my control, but the video kind of blew up on YouTube. Through the end of 2020, it kept having little bursts of views through September and October. And even this year, there were sudden like bursts in views again in May and June of this year. So yeah, I think ultimately people are just really curious about the tech industry and how to get jobs at Fang, myself included. And so I think that really helped this video get recommended a lot and actually clicked on as well as appear a lot in search results. And... Okay, okay, you're probably wondering how much money did you actually make from an Amazon video? I gotcha, let me look at my phone and let you know. Dun -dun -dun -dun. All right, so it looks like since uploading this video, I made a total of $1,856.17 off this video. Now, on one hand, that is quite a lot of money. It probably would be worth a month of rent in SF or a nice vacation for myself or 200 Chipotle burritos. But actually, this is kind of on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of how much money I usually make from YouTube ad revenue. For context, if we divide the numbers, I actually made less than $1.40 for every thousand views on this video. Or if we look at it another way, this video represents 36% of my total YouTube views, but only 16% of the total revenue I made off of YouTube. And for comparison, another video that I made about Notion and its security issues made $300 more than this one, despite having only 20% of the views. So yeah, that's actually quite a big difference and something that I wouldn't have expected before starting this channel. So let's dive in a little bit more to some factors that led to these discrepancies. Now, I should preface this by saying that YouTube is a huge learning process and I really don't know a lot in the grand scheme of things. But from my two-ish years of experience, I would say there are three main factors that really go into how much money you can make from ad revenue on a YouTube video. Now, the first main factor that contributes to how much money you can make is the topic of the video itself. Now, if you watch a lot of tech or finance content, you'll probably notice that the types of advertisers you see on those videos are either credit card companies or big tech companies or interview prep agencies or those guys selling things from their garage. And actually in those videos about tech and finance, advertisers actually pay more for their ads to be placed in those types of videos. And thus the creator making that content tends to make more money since the ads being placed on their videos are more expensive. Now, another huge factor in play is the demographic of your audience. And I think this explains a lot for why this video and other videos on my channel tend to make a bit less than average. So for this Amazon video in particular, 69% of my audience came from India. And in India, advertisers can pay a lot less to have their ads placed compared to here, probably due to the differing currency. And a great way to measure this is CPM, which means cost per mille or the amount of money that you can make per thousand views on a video. And so for example, India has an average CPM on my channel of $1.20. On the other hand, the CPM for the US on my channel is $17.65. And this actually explains a lot as to why, even though my video is about tech, it made a lot less than perhaps other videos on other channels, because this Amazon video was recommended a lot in India where advertisers can pay a lot less. Now, the third factor that could be in play is a number of mid-roll ads in a video. When you watch YouTube, you probably know that there are several ads that usually pop up. There's usually one at the beginning of the video and perhaps a couple dispersed throughout the video. Those ones in the middle of the video are called mid-roll ads. And thus, the longer that people can get through a video, the more mid-roll ads they can actually watch, which thus makes more money for YouTube and also for the creator. But if we look at my analytics, we can actually see that my watch time was not the highest and only about 12% of people actually got through to the end of the video to watch that second ad. So yeah, even though I had those mid-roll ads, people weren't always getting through to the end of the video, so I wasn't always making that money. So yeah, from my experience, those three factors of the video topic, the audience demographic, and the mid-roll ads really contributes a lot to how much money a video can make. And for reference, if we actually compare to the Notion video, we can see how these factors really came into play. 
In terms of the video topic itself, it also is about tech and security and productivity apps. So I think that only helped in terms of ensuring a high CPM. But the main difference here is that on that Notion video, about 22.8% of my audience came from the US. And thus, even though I got so much fewer, so much fewer, even though I got a fraction of the views as that Amazon video, because a CPM is so much higher for those US viewers, they kind of negated each other. And on top of that, I was able to put four mid-roll ads in this video since it was quite a bit longer. And I had a much better watch time with around 25 to 30% of people getting through to that final ad in the video. So all those factors combined basically meant that even though this video got far fewer views than that Amazon one, it was actually able to make a lot more money. So what did I learn? What did I learn? I learned a lot. <laughs> from doing YouTube, and I've talked about this in previous videos. I think this story and so many other stories of my channel really highlight the fact that YouTube is such a slow growth process. Things usually don't happen overnight, and for me at least, usually just as I'm on the verge of giving up on something, something else gets picked up on my channel that keeps me going. And in terms of the money side of things, as I mentioned, getting views on a video isn't always proportional to making a lot of money. That being said, getting a lot of views is always usually going to contribute to your channel's growth in one way or another. So for that Amazon video, even though it made less money than it could have, it did really help grow my channel in terms of my subscribers. And I gained, I think, 18,000 subscribers just from this video alone. And something else I didn't fully acknowledge when I started this channel is that there are a ton of ways to make money as a creator besides YouTube ad revenue, namely from sponsorships or from merch or digital products or even courses or Skillshare. And yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful and learned something new, whether it's about my sparse income or how to make money as a creator. Regardless, I hope that you liked it. And if you did, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you want to. Thank you again, Storyblocks, for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next one.